Uh, thanks, Alistair. Okay, uh, good day, everyone. So um, my name is Skobe Obona. I work for the OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium, as the Director of Product Management uh, for Standards. So I'm going to talk to you today about OGC APIs and the evolution of OGC standards. Um, pardon uh, the background, um, there's some drilling taking place on my in my neighborhood, so uh, pardon the um, sound effects. Um, okay, yeah, so moving on. So I'll first of all uh, provide you with an overview of the OGC um, and also to give some background as to why the OGC has uh, started on this um, uh, initiative to develop standards for OGC APIs. Uh, then I will um, explain the motivation for developing OGC APIs uh, and provide an overview of OGC API standards and to describe uh, a number of innovation initiatives that um, we have conducted uh, to, uh, to support the development of uh, these standards. And, and then finally, I'll, I'll explain how um, you can get involved in the development of uh, these exciting standards. So first of all, OGC is an international consortium of over 500 organizations. Those organizations include government uh, departments, private companies, um, publicly listed companies, universities, research centers. Uh, these organizations are um, spread across the, uh, across the globe and they collaborate in a consensus, project, uh, uh, consensus process to develop geospatial standards that improve interoperability between geospatial uh, solutions. And this uh, enables geospatial information to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, in terms of what we, uh, what value we bring to uh, members, so the, um, OGC is the world's leading and comprehensive community of experts that make location data more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And as I mentioned earlier on, we have members across um, various uh, uh, sectors from commercial right through to government and uh, academia. Now, over the past two decades, OGC web services have been used to publish millions of geospatial data sets. Um, and these data sets have been uh, published on hundreds of thousands of servers. Those servers in include implementations of, uh, of OGC web, web services, such as web map service, web map tile service, web feature service, web coverage service, uh, catalog uh, services for the web, as well as the sense uh, web enablement um, uh, suite of standards. And they've been used in a variety of um, uh, application areas from geology uh, through to emergency and disaster management, aviation, hydrology, um, in uh, telecommunications, uh, for instance, in quite a wide variety of, uh, uh, of, of areas. Now, uh, possibly as far back as perhaps 2015, um, discussions started within the OGC uh, with regard to how OGC web services could embrace um, a RESTful uh, approach. So that is the, um, the representational state transfer uh, approach. And, um, and in our Discussions, we uh, also considered, uh, you know, the, some the similarities. So what capabilities that are specified by REST uh, can be found within uh, classic OGC web services. So what you can see on the slide right now is a table that was um, uh, documented in an engineering report um, around uh, 2015 um, that uh, identified a number of uh, REST-based uh, cap uh, capabilities or requirements, uh, and then match them to the different OGC web services to um, determine, you know, which services supported uh, what. And you can see from this table that uh, capabilities such as HTTP error codes, uh, as well as exposure of di directory like uh, URI, URIs, 
were not necessarily um, supported in um, in those uh, standards. Other than the WMTS or WebMap Tile Service standard, the others uh, did not support uh, the directory like structure of uh, URIs. So, um, so fast forward from 2015, um, discussions uh, then uh, took, you know, uh, should I say a more focused turn in 2016 uh, with uh, discussions shifting from REST to web APIs. So the community realized that it wasn't just about having a RESTful approach, uh, but it was more important to have uh, a way of embracing web APIs um, to have all those capabilities that are built into the World Wide Web being uh, immediately available by default from OGC um, uh, standards or implementations of those standards. Uh, so in 2017, a white paper was published. That white paper was edited by George Percival, OGC's uh, Chief Technology Officer. Um, and that white paper uh, laid the foundation uh, for uh, what has now become the uh, the series of OGC uh, APIs. 2018 work started on the web feature service uh, version 3 or WFS3. Um, and then in 2019, uh, WFS3 was renamed to OGC API features um, as part of um, um, a, 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 re a revised strategy to ensure that the emerging web API uh, focused standards um, were consistent and uh, had an appropriate name to reflect that uh, consistency uh, across them. So why OGC APIs? Well, APIs are popular, very, very popular, and they are an effective method for uh, rapid software uh, development. Uh, if you look at the programmable uh, web, uh, the website that tracks uh, APIs, you'll see, um, you know, the uh, uptake, the increase in uptake over uh, recent years that it has been sign uh, significant. Uh, now, what we have what we have noticed um, as a standards development organization is that the variation in APIs has led to um, a, a degree of um, um, so I say deterioration in interoperability. So there's been very limited interoperability between uh, various APIs that have been uh, developed across the ICT industry. So as a standard uh, uh, standards development organization, uh, we've taken it, um, um, you know, um, amongst ourselves to uh, develop a series of open standards that will improve interoperability between uh, web APIs, specifically web APIs that publish geospatial uh, information and uh, other geospatial capabilities. Um, so OGC is advancing new standards um, while also simultaneously maintaining the OGC standards baseline. Uh, so we're developing this suite of OGC APIs whilst also uh, maintaining the existing uh, standard space line that includes the classic OGC web services. And uh, this is a recognition that uh, OGC web services have become a key part of uh, the infrastructure that uh, several organizations um, have in place. So it's necessary to ensure that uh, even as we introduce OGC APIs, uh, that there is um, a coordinated and managed um, you know, uh, introduction of those capabilities into the um, uh, existing uh, capabilities that are out there. So the OGC API approach is um, based on technologies that uh, did not exist, uh, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. Um, and uh, as such, what we are trying to do now is to ensure that we introduce those uh, capabilities into the OGC standards baseline uh, while also maintaining the existing approved o OGC web services uh, standards. And the approach that we're using to develop these OGC APIs is that of, um, of building blocks. So they are being designed to be modular API building blocks that make it possible for implementers to uh, bring different uh, building blocks into a single 
uh, API solution, uh, leveraging uh, recommendations from the special data on the web best practices, um, which is a, a standard that has been jointly developed by OGC and the W3C. Uh, we're leveraging open API. Each one of the OGC API stand, uh, standards includes an open API definition, which we uh, are hoping will make the um, developer experience a lot more efficient and a lot more enjoyable. And all of the development of the OGC APIs is being done uh, on GitHub, uh, on public repositories, uh, and we have a number of early implementations uh, as well. So it is a very developer-friendly um, uh, focused uh, initiative. All you can see on this slide is uh, the standards uh, that are currently under development, uh, OGC API Common, which provides uh, an overarching uh, base capability for all of the other OGC APIs. OGC API features will be, which will, will be used for publishing vector feature data. Uh, OGC API coverages for publishing raster coverages such as uh, credit uh, uh, Im uh, images. OGC API records for publishing metadata records, um, OGC API processes for publishing geospatial uh, computational processes such as buffering um, and I suppose hydrological uh, capabilities as well as several uh, other uh, processes that can be wrapped within a a uh, web-based uh, uh, API, uh, as well as uh, OGC API tiles and OGC API maps styles, the environmental data retrieval API. And we're currently uh, developing a number of concepts, one for discrete global grid systems and another one for uh, routing. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, each OGC API def uh, standard is, includes an open API definition, and what you can see on the slide is uh, an example uh, of one of those. Uh, and on this slide is the roadmap uh, for the various OGC API standards. And uh, what you can see from this slide is that uh, we're aiming to uh, have about four or five of them approved by the end of uh, this year. So within the next six months, you should see uh, a number of OGC API standards being uh, uh, released and, and, and launched. Um, to date, OGC API features part one uh, core is the only one that has been published, uh, but we've also uh, released a, a compliance testing suite for OGC API features. So any organization that implements this standard um, can ha have the implementation tested. And if it, if it passes, they can then apply to have the OGC compliant um, uh, badge um, uh, placed uh, alongside with uh, the uh, product. Another standard is OGC API Common, uh, which is under development as well as uh, OGC API Features Part 2, which will focus on uh, supporting a wide range of coordinate reference systems. Uh, what you can see on the slide is uh, the three LE implementers certified as OGC uh, compliant. Um, these are LE implementers of OGC API Features. And I've highlighted uh, one uh, of the products there. This is PyGeo API from, uh, from uh, the Open Source Geospatial Foundation, also known as OSGeo. Uh, that has been certified as OGC uh, co uh, compliant. Uh, other upcoming standards, I've already uh, explained what uh, they are. So the uh, three more that I'll just highlight are uh, OGC API features part three for the common query language. You might remember the common query language from the catalog services for the web uh, standard. So that has been pulled out now and it's going to be applied to a number of different other stand, uh, uh, standards. Um, now we're running a number of initiatives to help uh, develop these, um, uh, these standards. Um, and the, the initiatives uh, include test bits, pilots, plug first research projects, interoperability experiments, sprints and hackathons. Um, if, if you've been involved in, uh, in the OGC before, you'll know that uh, the OGC runs an annual testbed. Uh, and um, with the current testbed being testbed 16, and we have a number of activities that are currently uh, ongoing within testbed 16, activities that will be uh, developing aspects of uh, the OGC API uh, standards. 
Um, but also worth noting on this slide is the sprints and hackathons. So we run a number of sprints every year. Um, and uh, on this slide, you can see examples of uh, sprints and hackathons that we've uh, ran, uh, uh, including activities to do with, uh, with, with OGC APIs. Uh, in June last, last year in, uh, in London, we ran an OGC API hackathon. Uh, we had about 70 participants and, um, and you know, uh, taking uh, part in person in London at the Geovation Hub. Um, and focusing on OGC APIs um, for uh, a couple of days. Um, then towards the end of the year, we ran another sprint uh, in the US and, uh, and also in January, we ran another sprint. Um, in March, we ran an env environmental data retrieval API sprint. And then most recently in April, uh, we ran a virtual sprint focusing on, o on OGC API tiles. Uh, and that was... Minutes. Okay, thank you. And that was co-sponsored by um, uh, Ordnance Survey. So we have quite a number of activities as well uh, ongoing uh, within the testbed uh, program focusing on OGC APIs. There's also a pilot that's looking at implementing an OGC API for publishing 3D data containers as well as 3D tiles. Um, so that's currently uh, in, in, in progress. Um, so in summary, OGC API standards um, will be key for rapid cross-community integration um, as, uh, as we move forward. They will be a key enabler uh, for the various domains, um, you know, from agriculture, aviation, uh, defense, law enforcement, health, smart cities, uh, um, you know, you, all the uh, different domains that uh, geospatial information is uh, is used in, so there will be a key enabler for all those um, you know, all those domains and all the tasks and activities that uh, individuals within uh, those domains uh, actually carry out. And we're expecting the post four G community to be a you know a, a key uh, and active uh, participant within the development of these OGC API uh, standards. We are reaching out uh, quite widely in different uh, parts of the globe to the various force 4 g um, uh, chapters um, and we're you know encouraging uh, the uh, open source um, community to be involved in the development of these standards. We expect OGC web server, OGC web server standards to continue uh, to be maintained. They will be maintained by the standards working groups within the OGC. Uh, but we are also advising organizations to start planning now uh, for the introduction of OGC APIs into operational uh, systems. Now, if you'd like to find out more or if you'd uh, like to get involved in the development of these OGC APIs uh, or even the adoption of the OGC API standards, uh, please feel free to send me an email at jihobonet. Uh, OGC.org or to send an email to my colleague Atina Truckers uh, um, uh, at a truckers at OGC.org uh, or, or uh, feel free to send uh, to visit the OGCAPI.OGC.org uh, website which is where we have all the information regarding uh, OGC APIs. Uh, thank you for your participation and uh, uh, if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. That was a really comprehensive introduction to all of the different uh, OGC APIs there. That was really cool. So I've got a couple of questions from Joanna. Um, is JSON used as an output format of OGC APIs? Uh, yes, JSON is used as an uh, output uh, and a messaging mechanism uh, across all of the OGC APIs. Um, there's a conformance class and OGC API features that specifically um, um, requires implementations of that standard to support JSON. Uh, in OGC API coverages, there's a requirement class for JSON as well as another requirement class um, um, for, uh, for JSON LD uh, as well. Um, and that's uh, consistent uh, across the OGC API. So JSON is uh, used across all of them. Cool. And her second question was, um, are there any clients out there uh, for OGC APIs? Uh, yes, there are client um, implementations uh, out there. Uh, the 
Ones that I have seen being demonstrated include um, uh, a Cheris uh, Gnosis um, um, uh, desktop application. Uh, there's a video on, uh, on YouTube uh, showing how uh, that uh, client application was, uh, was used to access OGC API tiles. Uh, but also um, the team from Skymantex uh, implemented a Unity uh, demonstrator Unity 3D uh, showing how OGC API tiles could be used in, uh, um, in an augmented reality uh, application. Um, so the, those videos are, uh, are on, on, on YouTube uh, currently. And there are several other uh, client up applications uh, uh, out there. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, got a multi-part question here from Ivan. Uh, it says, okay. Does the OGC have an official stance on whether a reference implementation for a standard A should be available prior to approval of the standard, B should be free and open source, and C should be funded by OGC? Um, so the official position is only with regard to A, uh, which is that uh, we, are, we expect three implementations um, for, uh, to, to be available for uh, an OGC standard to be approved as a, uh, as a standard. Um, now, those implementations do not necessarily need to then, um, you know, apply for reference implementation status. Um, for some organizations, um, you know, that model does not uh, work for the uh, business model or that approach does not work for the business uh, model. However, um, we have had three implementations uh, for, um, you know, uh, three implementations for OGC API features proven uh, ahead of uh, the standard being, uh, being adopted. Uh, we currently have four, uh, possibly five actually, uh, implementations of OGC API tiles um, and, um, and a similar situation, uh, although some of the newer OGC API standards, are, the implementations are, are still um, uh, to be developed. Uh, so we, we do not have a position as to whether or not, uh, it, they, whether or not the products should be uh, funded by OGC. OGC does not um, uh, develop software uh, um, uh, products where comp uh, completely standards development organization. The only uh, software that we publish is the compliance testing uh, engine, uh, team engine, uh, which is called team engine uh, or OGC's validator. That's the only thing that we, uh, we publish it as, a, as a software product. Um, so we leave it up to the geospatial community to do the great work of uh, implementing uh, OGC standards. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and then a question here from Nesak. How can I integrate OGC APIs for online raster processing, such as band math operations? Okay, um, so there are two standards, OGC API standards, um, that are currently draft standards. Uh, however, there are two of them that, I, um, that are, uh, apply to that specific use case. So there's o OGC API coverages, which can be, uh, so which is used for publishing um, uh, raster data coverages, such as raster data. Um, and uh, those coverages can be, um, you know, multidimensional cover, uh, coverages or multidimensional data cubes if, if, uh, if, if the context is that of data cubes. So there is some um, uh, raster algebra that can be applied to, um, um, to coverages through, through an OGC API coverages implementation. However, the OGC API processes uh, standard, uh, that is also one that can be uh, used for, um, you know, for running, um, you know, uh, uh, band math or Rasta al al algebra uh, across coverages. Uh, so that is, those are the two um, examples that I would recommend for that specific uh, use case. Cool. Um, just a, a final question from me, and it, I don't think it's directly about the APIs necessarily, but you mentioned um, OGC test beds. Could you just talk a little bit more about what a test bed is and, and why, okay. you, why you run them? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, so the work uh, that uh, the OGC does is split into a number of programs and the innovation program does all of the experimentation uh, testing out new technologies, 
um, uh, testing and validating um, you know, whether or not those technologies potentially could add capability into either current or future standards. Um, now, what the innovation program does um, is that they run initiatives such as test beds, pilots and others, uh, and the outputs from those test beds, um, you know, and those outputs include demonstrations or engineering reports, those outputs are then provided to the standards program. And the standards program, that's where you'll find the uh, standards working groups and the, uh, um, and the domain working groups. So the results of the test beds uh, get um, passed on to the standards working group and then the standards working group take those lessons um, and um, consider, consider them as they are actually writing the, uh, the specifications. So the test bed is a very key uh, um, mechanism within that standardization process because it does the experimentation that informs the development uh, of, the, of the standards. Uh, there's a call, an annual call, and OGC offers um, a, a cost sharing model. So uh, organizations apply to receive uh, and, uh, some funding to offset um, their work within the test beds. And if their application is successfully uh, selected for cost share funding, uh, they are then uh, given uh, a series of tasks to uh, conduct during uh, the period of that test bed and they receive uh, 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 you know uh, 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 an amount to offset some of those costs uh, so keep an eye out uh, usually the call for participation comes out around November December time so uh, yeah, you know keep an eye out and um, watch the OGC website uh, for announcements about uh, the call for participation uh, for the test bed but during the course of the year we run several pilots um, and so during the course of the year, feel, you know, I'd encourage you to have a look at the OGC uh, website because there's, um, you know, there's always a call for participation or a request for information uh, announced on the OGC website. And uh, in terms of pilots and test beds, there's usually a cost sharing um, me mechanism that usually is sponsored. Um, so it is possible to receive some form of offset um, for the effort that you put into those activities.